Kelsey. I'm coming to you today with my hat and with my February wrap-up video. I read five books this February. Three of them were library books, two of which have already gone back. The first two uh, were the two that have already gone back to the library, and the first one was Good Omens by Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett. I actually read most of this uh, at the end of January and then finished it in the beginning of February. Are you tired of reading about lost princesses? How about a lost antichrist? That's what this book is about. So basically in this book the time has come for the apocalypse and the great battle between the forces of heaven and hell. Uh, but there are some things going wrong. Two of our main characters are an angel and a demon who have lived on Earth among mortals for long enough that they both kind of like the sort of messy moral grayness of human existence, and they are having some doubts about the upcoming apocalypse. Meanwhile, the Antichrist has gotten swapped with the wrong baby and failed to receive the proper satanic upbringing, and has been raised as kind of a normal kid. So if that sounds really great for you, this book will not disappoint. It's pretty funny. I, on the other hand, kind of have a theory that uh, for comedy, if the subject of the comedy is something that you personally don't really care much about, then you're not going to find it as funny. I'm sure there's some actual comedic theory somewhere in the world that talks about this and can tell me whether I'm right or not. But that's what I'm coming up with as, as my reason why I wasn't totally into this book. This book is basically going after Christian end-of-the-world theology. And as someone who was not raised in a religious household, that's something that everything I know about it, it I know about it in an academic way. Uh, I don't have any sort of personal stakes in those ideas. So while on one level, like, I got most of the jokes, um, I had to Google the Antichrist. That's embarrassing. He's a major character, and I don't even know if it's pronounced Antichrist or Antichrist. If you know, please tell me. I feel like on another level, I didn't really get the jokes, if you know what I mean. So I personally, for me, can only give this a three-star rating, but I acknowledge that it's a really clever book with some really great ideas, and it probably deserves a higher rating from that. But personally, for me, this was a little challenging to get through, and I could only really give it three stars. The second book I read in February was Days of Blood and Starlight by Lainey Taylor. That's the second book in the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy. As I said in my TBR video, this is a young adult fantasy series that starts out as urban fantasy paranormal, and then it gets kind of crazy. But I think Lainey Taylor has a really great, sophisticated, elegant writing style that demonstrates just a wild imagination. Um, and that's what I really like about this series so far. I like the main character, Karu. I think she's a very wonderfully layered character. Her decisions make sense to me for the most part, which isn't always the case for YA protagonists. I love that she's an artist and she has an artistic soul and her friends are also artists. I love Zuzana and Mick, who are side characters, her friends. I was a little worried going into this book because the first book relied so heavily in the way it was written on sort of mysterious element of the reader not knowing really what's going on, and having the realities of Carew's life revealed in bits throughout the story. But I was worried that not having that mystery to, to figure out as a reader was going to make the second book in the trilogy less interesting. The story, though, gets so much bigger in this book. Uh, and then the third book is physically enormous, so I imagine it's going to get even crazier in that book. And Lainey Taylor does sort of keep playing games with you as a reader, where she doesn't 
tell you exactly what's going on uh, in certain scenes until somewhat later. So that's uh, a sort of fun element of her writing. But I can see, on the other hand, how that might get frustrating for some people because it's a little bit non-conventional. The other thing I want to say about this series is especially reading this book where, where the plot just got so much more intense. I found myself wondering when young adult books started getting this really, um, I guess, violent and uh, brutal? I think brutal is the word I'm looking for. Um, because some really brutal things happen in this book. And I'm a grown-up, I can handle it, but I, I was thinking back on the YA books that I was reading when I was actually a teenager, and I'm thinking, I don't, I don't think they were like this. I think young adult literature has changed. Um, or maybe my memory of what I was reading in high school is just clouded in this rosy glow and I'm not really remembering it. But yeah, I feel like the second book in the series was beautifully written, uh, really uh, imaginatively developed, but probably not for the faint of heart. I gave it four stars, which is the same rating that I gave to the first book, Daughter of Smoke and Bone. I'm going to pour myself more tea. The third book I read this month was Radiance by Catherine M. Valente, and I have already done a full review of this book. It was my full review video of the month, and I uh, will link that for you if you want to hear more of my thoughts. This is a really unusual book. It's a kind of challenging read, but I thought it was pretty brilliant. It centers around a documentary filmmaker named Severin in an alternate deco-punk history of the 20th century, where all of the planets in the solar system are inhabited. And it has a lot to do with storytelling and the search for truth um, and how we get meaning from things. And Severin disappears while filming a documentary about a lost colony on Venus and is presumed dead. And this is told in a variety of formats um, from various perspectives addressing her disappearance slash death. It's definitely not an easy book to read, it's a challenging book, but if you want to know more of what I thought about it, please check out my review. Um, I gave this five stars. I thought it was really, really smart. Next up for some lighter reading, I read Stars Above by Marissa Meyer. This is her collection of short stories that take place in the Lunar Chronicles universe, most of them uh, centering around the characters of the Lunar Chronicles. And just to let you know what's in here, the contents are The Keeper, which is uh, about Scarlet's grandmother, Glitches, which is a prequel to Cinder, The Queen's Army, which is a prequel to Scarlet, Carswell's Guide to Being Lucky, which is a prequel to Cress, After Sunshine Passes By, which is about young Cress as a child, The Princess and the Guard, which is about winter growing up uh, on the moon, The Little Android, which is a fairy tale retelling on its own that doesn't directly relate to the main plot of the Lunar Chronicles, even though Cinder shows up in it, um, The Mechanic, which is a uh, the first scene in Cinder from a flipped perspective, so you get it from Kai's perspective instead of Cinder's, and Something Old, Something New, which is the epilogue to the series. Glitches, The Queen's Army, and The Little Android uh, were previously available online, so those were rereads for me, but I was glad that I reread them. I was glad that I read every story in this book in order because I thought that um, actually the best thing about this collection was uh, how well each story flowed into the next. I thought in terms of ordering the stories in a way that sort of connected one to the other was I guess very well curated, uh, so that pleased me. And these stories are enjoyable if you finish the series and want more of this world, but ultimately um, this is a, a supplemental book, and I feel like 
things that are really truly supplemental. I, I just can't give them a five star rating even if I don't have any problems with them. So this is a four star rating for me. I'd kind of like to do a series review on this channel of any series that I finish. So when I finished Winter, I was going to post a Lunar Chronicles review, but then I was like, nah, I'll put it off until Stars Above comes out. So now I can theoretically do that, but I have several other videos that are higher priority for me to film right now, so we'll see. Uh, if, if you really want a uh, full review of the Lunar Chronicles from me, please let me know and I'll be more likely to do it, and do it sooner rather than later. The last book I finished in February was Eva Luna by Isabel Allende. Because this is a very small and radial paperback that I don't really care about, this was my uh, stick it in my purse and tote it along everywhere I go book. Uh, and as such, I read it in little portions throughout the months so that might have affected how I viewed it. This is a book from 1987. It's one of Isabel Allende's uh, earlier books and also one of her best known books. We follow a girl named Ava Luna as she grows up uh, from infanthood to adulthood. Actually, it starts before she's born with the story of her mother in an unnamed South American country. And Allende is kind of known as a writer of magical realism, but my impression was mostly of it just being a, a stylistically dense and rich style of writing. The majority of the book sort of goes from anecdote to anecdote uh, as Ava comes into and eventually leaves various different living situations in her childhood, and so it encompasses a, a broad, diverse cast of eccentric characters. And all the while it takes place in a country that is in political turmoil. So one of the main things I got from this book was sort of a sense of how normal people uh, go on with their lives in the midst of major events. You also get these rich portrayals of people from all sorts of different walks of life. And as the book goes on, it gets increasingly political in nature. You kind of get the sense that it's supposed to be a sort of snapshot of a certain period in South American history, but told through this really distinctive lens of Ava's experience of the world that she grows up in. I found, however, uh, even though it's not a long book, it's only like 300 pages or so, um, maybe this was just because I read it in small bits over a long period of time, but I found like it took a really long time to amount to much of anything that I could really get attached to. And I kind of just got the feeling by the end that this isn't really the type of book I really like, even though there were a bunch of elements of it that I appreciated. So I gave this three stars. I'm glad I read it for uh, sort of diversity in reading, but I don't think I'm going to be actively seeking out a whole ton more of this type of literature. The last book that was in my uh, February TBR, I mentioned that if I got through all of those books I would want to start. Lord of the Rings. I did start it, as you can see. I am not finished with it. I have only started The Fellowship of the Ring. So my March TBR is coming at you very soon, and spoiler alert, you can probably guess there's going to be a lot of The Lord of the Rings, and not a whole lot else. Anyhow, I will see you later. Bye for now.